Okay, so I'm back, and here I have an image of a couple of pears that um, I painted in ArtRage. And uh, we're going to be going over layers and how I use layers in relationship to painting watercolors in ArtRage, and um, why I think using them is important, and how I use them, and to what effect. So this image is finished, and what I'm going to be doing is basically showing you um, how I built it so that we can understand the usage of layers without you hanging out with me for an hour or more while I paint this and screw up a bunch of times and figure out what I want it to look <laughs> like. Um, in a gist though, my approach to painting with watercolors in relationship to layers is um, that I, in, the, in large part, um, duplicate the process of painting with natural media. So um, I know some people want to paint on only a single layer. They sort of don't want to cheat perhaps and do things digitally, but I actually find that using layers in ArtRage while painting watercolors is actually the process that is best representative of painting with natural media watercolors where you have to lay in color and then blow it dry and then lay in a new layer of color and blow it dry and build your image uh, one layer of translucent color at a time. So on that respect I think the process is actually of uh, the digital process of layers is actually happens by chance to be very representative of the process of laying color in you know in, in natural media um, painting. But the truth is, why is that important? I mean, it doesn't really matter how you paint it, I guess. But the truth, what's what's really wonderful is that in this example, uh, duplicating the process of painting with natural media, in my opinion, helps produce final digital images that look more like natural media. So it is one of those situations where I think um, painting in the same way you would paint if you were painting with natural media helps you produce final images that bear a greater resemblance to natural media. So I'm all about layers in ArtRage and with watercolors you can see here I got a lot. I might have 10 or more just for painting these two pairs and it might have taken me an hour or something. So that's what's going on there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start taking these layers and removing them. And you're just going to see basically um, what I sort of ended up starting with and how I built this image up. So first you can see I'm, I'm removing a lot of darker shadows. For example, here on the bottom of that um, Don Pear. Now a big fat set of chroma is going away. I'm getting down to the pale color on the Don Here goes the red. And there goes the pale, pale green. Now I move over to this Asian pear, <clears throat> which I grew myself. And I lose a lot of peppering from the sticker sprays. And there goes a lot of the shadows, right? You see that again, bring it back. Lots of shadow go away. The pear is getting lighter and lighter. A lot more is going to go away. And now I'm back to the pale, pale yellow. And now I'm down to the canvas color. So I'm hoping you can keep in your mind what this looked like looked like before I, you know, removed all the color, because now we're going to build it back up. So just like when I would be working with natural media watercolors, I lay in my palest color first, and I try to preserve whatever pales I want on it. I want to preserve my whites for the canvas color, wherever I might have very pale color, and I want to preserve my yellows, right? So my pale, pale yellows, and then I'm going to put my darker colors in, but once I cover these, if I was doing it with natural media, they're gone. Now, thank goodness I have the undo button. But still, I want to preserve these. And you're going to see as we begin to build the image why it's really useful to do your lights on the bottom and get a new layer and do your darks on top. Here we see the first example, which is that by putting the darks on top and having them be on separate layers, the two, the two colors don't interact. So I can get dry brush stroke um, effects for this darker, um, tonally darker shadow on top of 
the paler color. And this kind of process where we have a darker color smooshing on top of a lighter color, and I get nice little dry brush effects where the brush is relating to the canvas texture or the layer texture, that's the kind of stuff that looks a lot like um, natural media watercolors to me. Now here you see a dry brush stroke I did, just like in the last lesson, probably by setting my settings, my loadings low, and changing the layer textures. And here you can see I blended it out on one side with a blender. Next up is going to come a whole other layer of shadows. And just to sort of um, illustrate what I'm doing here, each layer of shadows is very much like a little babushka doll uh, stuck inside of another babushka doll. So first we have white, which is the canvas. You know, we circle in this, this pair drawing. Then we bring in the palest yellow color, and it fits within the big pair, but it doesn't go everywhere because we want this bright gleam in a couple spots where it's just the canvas white showing through. Then we come in with this brown color here, and it, of course, only goes on top of the yellow color. And then again, we come in with this even darker color that I just set in to, the, uh, to that color. So each time it's, you know, the parameters of where I'm playing the darker shadow is, is being set by the shadow previous to it. And slowly I'm painting a smaller and smaller area painting the shadows in that darker, darker spot until what I'm left with is a, a really interesting round form that's basically being created out of, sh out of building shadows. So, whereas commonly if I was maybe doing an oil painting, I might be coming in and part of my experience as a painter is that I would be building form by actually putting in highlights of some sort. I'm painting highlights on top, some white or cream or whatever. In watercolors, the truth is I build form largely by bringing in shadows. And these pale sections are largely sections I have painted. And that is how I build the whites. And that is what is giving me this nice shift in tone. And that's and this is partly why this is looking like watercolors and why I think it's important to replicate the process of building from lights to darks. Because I think it gives you a final result that bears a great resemblance to natural media, if you know if that's your goal. So once again, here I have some pepper spray I brought in with a sticker spray to give it some texture. We'll be talking about that in a later, le a later lesson on sticker sprays. And now we move over to the Danjou. Here you see again, I put in the pale, pale green, right? This little sort of uh, this base color is going to be the lightest sections on this pair. And nothing's going to get lighter than this. This is the color I'm going to be preserving when I want to try and get a gleam. Or something very very bright on it. Now here I brought in this red. Now I push in some rich color. Now you can see that because this is on a new layer I'm getting some nice results in terms of this red is not interacting with the, with the layer below it and with the color below it. They're not blending in any way so I can get good dry brush strokes that are totally independent from the layer beneath it. Much like if I put in those lower colors, if I basically painted this stuff and I blew, blew it dry with a blow dryer and then I came back on and that was almost like a separate painting and this goes back on top of the lower layer. And basically what it allows me to do is the only relationship between these two layers is that watercolors is translucent and that one color is pushing through the other slightly. That is the relationship. The textural part is almost like two separate paintings that happen to be lying on top of each other. And that's why I can get this nice dark edged effect on top of a pale section. I feel like that's really important if you want to be trying to emulate uh, natural media watercolors. Now next comes the shadow with some pepper spray. I put the shadows in again on the stem and I put the shadows on the leaf. And then I actually did a lighting shadow on the pair which was missing. And you can see down here, this is where we get into sort of the benefits of being digital. I, I actually, on this final layer, you can see I have a, a big blotch of yellow because after I finished the Danjou pair, I recognized as a team, the Danjou was way, had a far richer chroma. It was far more saturated than this pair was. And this pair looked really weird. It was some sort of ghost pair. So I, I came back in and I laid in a nice rich yellow on top of everything and I thought it looked significantly better and a great deal more like the Asian pair I had. So that's what I'm doing with 
layers in Art Rage. Um, I think using this process, which is basically the same process I used if I was painting with a natural media watercolor, um, has helped me achieve some results that look a lot like natural media watercolors. So, in, I don't, I'm not all about process. Um, I think you know there are lots of ways, more than one way to skin a cat. But if I think in this instance that duplicating the process of natural media is giving me excellent, is giving me good results. It's giving me results at least that I'm happy with in terms of the fact that I think they look like natural media. And I have my own issues about the composition of the image, but I think these are reasonable results in terms of does this look like it was painted with watercolors. And I think those results are coming out of the process. So use your layers, set them to multiply when for the blend mode. When you build each layer, don't forget to please play with the transparency. If it's too dark, make it less transparent. That's a really common thing. I think some of these images that people make are just they have too much chroma. It's not the way translucent watercolors look. I think you have the opportunity here digitally to change that and, the, and you should take advantage of that. And between those things, I think you're going to get, you're going to have the opportunity to explore getting some, some good results. So use your layers and liberally. Thanks a lot. Um, in the next, in, next lesson, we'll be talking about my brush settings and how I use them and to what effect. All right. Bye-bye.